singing you are great in all you do keep singing you are great in all you do Abba Father you are great you are great in all you do you are great you are great you are great you are great Somebody say you are great. He knows you. You got to confess that He is great in all He does. Yes, Lord, you are great. You are great. You are great. He knows you do. Father, you are great. Over here, you are great in all you do. You are great in all you do. You are great in all you do. You
Father, I bless your name for your daughter, Lord God, for all that you do in her life, Lord God, is great. All that you do in her life is true. All that you do in her life is good, Lord God. I thank you for the promises that you have spoken over her life. I thank you, Lord God, for the ways and the directions. I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit and the anointing, Lord God. I thank you, God, that you surround her with your spirit. You surround her with your fire. I thank you, Lord God, that your edge of protection is all around her, Lord God. I pray, thee, Father, that you lead her in the way. Lead her in your way, Lord God, in all the ways, in all her life. I pray thee that your spirit, Lord God, shall be in her, in head of her, God. Let your power, Lord God, reside in her life. Circumcise her heart continually, Lord God, and bind her with your heart in your heart. Increase her in every side in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you, God, for what you do in the life hey lord god calls her to be the delight of her parents calls her to be the delight of your kingdom calls her to be the delight of your power calls her to be the delight i pray dear lord god that your spirit of father we continually go be upon her God. You are true in all you do. In all you do. You are true. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us the way and your path. We bless you for all that you have done and for the things that you are currently doing. We open up, say, pour out, speak unto us, do your work greatly, mightily. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your brother, your neighbor, your sister. Say, I love you, I love you. as the Lord as the loves me. Hallelujah. It means also, I... why, why is the microphone? Hallelujah. It means sometimes... It will be spanking. When I say spanking, I'm talking about correction. There is no love without correction. Hallelujah. The Lord says, He chastises those He loves, and He prunes those He also loves, so they may bring much more fruit. The word of the Lord says, it is better to have a reproach of the enemy and a bad love of a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. So, art, I don't know, I need some uh, battery, certainly. Hallelujah. We are to get in our spirit the reality that the Lord loves us, love as he loves. Hallelujah. Amen. If we can have uh, some battery for me, give me give me the other microphone. This one, while y'all uh, no no this one, yes, give me this one while y'all you can get some battery for me. Hallelujah. So the Lord loves us, and we are to love as He loves us. He says in the book of John chapter seventeen, He said, "Father, I pray that there be one, and they love each other, so that what." So that the world will know and will see and will believe that I was sent. Hallelujah. So the Lord Jesus says it's only through our love as children of the most high 
that the world will believe that indeed he was sent. So I pray that the love of God that surpasses all understanding guards our heart. Hallelujah. Guard our heart that the love of God, that the love of Christ that surpasses all understanding guards our heart and our mind. Hallelujah. In the house of God, the word of God tells us it is there that he let rain his unction, blessing, anointing. Hallelujah. It is there. And remember, whenever we are gathered two or three, he has promised he is among us. Hallelujah. He has promised he is among us. So I pray that the love of God, last Sunday the Lord has spoken to us that we are each brother keeper. Hallelujah. We are each brother keeper. So that the love of Christ continually in our heart increase. Continually in our mind increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is important so that none of us remain behind. Hallelujah. So say, say none of us. None of us. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my. Listen. Listen, children of people. Children of God. The Lord did not intend for any of the children of Israel to stay behind. He did not. The issue with the children of Israel is that there were many leaders. And the leaders who did not learn to bind together. The Bible said that Korah rose. But Korah was not just a simple guy. Hallelujah. He was a leader. Hallelujah. He was a leader. And with him, all the leaders also rose. Hallelujah. But it was not intended for any of them to stay behind. So the word of God which has been given unto us is a reminder that we cannot become like the children of Israel who stay behind. Hallelujah. Because there were some who called Caleb and Joshua. I, I, amen. Even though the, the, the generation of Joshua and Caleb stayed behind, they did not stay behind. Say, I am a Joshua. I am a Joshua. I am a Joshua. I am called to go further, to go forward. And my family and my children shall go with me forward, forward, forward. I shall possess, I shall lead in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are called to go further. We are called to go further. We are called to go further. The Spirit of God says, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. There is also love. There is also truth. There is also patience. There is also forgiveness. For where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. The Word of God says that if any of us have sinned, that we who are what? Spiritual, amen? We are to do what? We do to strengthen, amen? Hallelujah. To strengthen. If any of us has become weak, who, or uh, how do I say that? The, the, the rest who are still strong must do what? They must bring the weak in the admonition of patience and love. It is important. Hallelujah. It is important. So because none of us has been called to stay behind. Hallelujah. And the spirit of Korah will rise 
and cause the people to fall. But the spirit of Joshua will rise and cause the people to go forward. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to be Korah. I refuse to be Korah. I refuse to be Korah. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Christ came, he came to bind us together. He came to make a bond of us together. So that uh, we succeed together. He did not intend for one of us to be greater than the other one. Hallelujah. For when the disciple went to him and asked him, Lord, among us, who is the greater? He said, among you, the greater is the one who serves the other one. Hallelujah. He did not say he's the one who serves me. Eh? Hey, hallelujah. Sometimes people say, oh, I go to church, not for somebody. I go to church for the Lord. No, the Lord said, go for somebody and me. Serve the one you see before you serve the one you don't see. Hallelujah. So the one who wants to be greater among you must serve the other one. So I pray that we remain in the spirit of truth, in the spirit of bond, in the spirit of love of Christ, so that none of us stays behind. I say and I repeat, last Sunday, the Lord spoke unto us the word of prophecy by telling that we are to become Brother Keeper. People of God, it is important because what God has spoken, it is for the intent that we succeed. Hallelujah. It is for the intent that we succeed. And for this reason, you must make sure that your heart, your mind, and your spirit is free from anything of the enemy. Hallelujah. From anything of the enemy. Earlier, Pastor Martin was praying, and in the prayer towards the end, he prayed that the every bird, spiritual bird, that has been sent in order to eat up. Hallelujah. That every wind that has been sent in order to plant the chaff shall be cancel and destroy. You know, that really resonated in my spirit because I understand that Christ said in the book of John 17, I pray that there be one. Hallelujah. I pray that there be one. He did not pray so that uh, we are acting like one. But he pray so that we be one. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I pray to be among my brethren the least. I pray to be among my brethren the least. He all bound, binded us in the spirit of love. So we be able to go and to fulfill the plans of God together. Without being said, let's jump into what the Lord has given three weeks ago. But finally, we're going to speak of it today. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I will speak to you in a dream. I believe it was a Friday we were praying. And Kela Masoma, she was praying that we should pray that uh, we will, uh, she says something about dream. We should, we should pray that we should 
Remember? No, no. Um, that, that, like, is a kind of like, I forgot to pray. Is a kind of, she prayed that we'll be able to expect in our dream something about dream. It was three weeks ago. Where, we, uh, there you go, to overcome in our dream. Hallelujah. So that the, our lives, spiritual life, should not only be concentrated into what we live in, but into understanding that our dream. So that day, we started praying for our dreams. Do you remember that? You remember that? Yeah. That day, we started praying for our dreams. That uh, we will consciously know that in our dream, we must overcome. In our dream, we must leave Christ. In our dream, we must rise. Like, so that uh, we consciously pray for our dreams. Because we pray for everything else. But we don't pray for our dreams. That's what I'm saying. Lord, I pray that my dreams... Are da -da 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 -da. So that day, the Lord spoke through her. And the Lord spoke in my spirit. So he said, I will speak to you in a dream. Now listen. To whom he says, I will speak to you in a dream is to the prophet. For he says, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will speak to him in a dream. Hallelujah. Let me repeat again. If there be a prophet among, give me numbers 12. Let's start from verse 1, and we're going to go to the verse 6. Numbers chapter 12, we're going to start from verse 1 to verse 6. Go ahead. Number chapter 12, starting mm -hmm. from verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Mm -hmm. Continue. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. And now the man Moses was very meek. Okay, on the screen. Uh -huh. The men mm -hmm. which were upon the face of the now, earth. Now, no, listen. They they rose. G give me verse one. Give me verse one. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Who was Miriam? But she was not just Moses' sister. She was a prophetess. Anointed by God. Who was Aaron? Also anointed by God. A high priest. He was not of the lower rank. He was of the highest rank. And then, them two together, they associated and spake against Moses, not about the spirit of Moses, not about the leading of Moses, not about the teaching of Moses, but just his personal life. Hallelujah. Which shouldn't be, quote unquote, a big deal. Should I say for God? Because God looks at, and he says, Moses, come here, Aaron, come here, uh, Miriam, come here. You three, I'm going to use y'all to lead everybody. Moses will be on the head. You, Aaron, will be here. You, Miriam, will be here. And the people will lead and will we, we, we'll follow. So all the things that Moses has been doing was according to how the Lord was telling him. But prior to starting it, he had a life that was outside of the perfect will of God. He went out. He married with a Ethiopian. And they thought it was okay to simply complain about the woman that he married. Now, again, it wasn't a big deal because it's just about a displeasure of what he has chosen. But you see, the thing that was not of a big deal, the Lord considered it a big deal. Hallelujah. 
So the Lord now comes and says, and go, go ahead. So, and Miriam and Aaron, sorry, verse 1. Go ahead again. And Miriam and, and, Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses mm -hmm. because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Uh -huh. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Uh -huh. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses. So what now they're trying to do is that they're trying to attach his ministry to his personal life. By saying, if truly is a man of God, he will not marry an Ethiopian. Uh, 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 an <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But the difference between the anointing of the office and then his personal life is the fact that God has allowed him to marry an Ethiopian. Because the day he was marrying her, God could have struck that Ethiopian to just, you know, because he knows he's going to use it. So he knows, he, not only he's going to use him, but he knows he's going to tell him to not marry outside of the people. You see what I'm saying? So God, who knows all, he could have made ways in order to make sure that when Moses arrived, he's clean from every accusation. But he didn't. So what he wanted among them was the same spirit that the Lord has asked to the disciple. Be one. And the purpose for which is because he wants to speak to us. But you see, when God speaks to us to lead us, when he speaks to us to grow us, when he speaks to us to increase us, if we are what, not one, the hearing comes. But somebody can just uh, decide to hold on what God said. That's what I'm saying. God can speak to one of us and the person will say, oh. but the purpose of why God is speaking to us is for us to go further. Read for me verse 2. Verse 2. And they said, had, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So Moses did not go to complain about them. Amen. He did not report them to nobody. As they were complaining about Moses, who heard it? Hallelujah. And then verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, he three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the Lord spake unto all three of them, Come out. Suddenly they thought, hey, today is our day of breakthrough. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because they had, they, they did not imagine that whatever they say was counted by the Lord as a problem. The Lord did not tell them, because you have spoken this way, come, I have to tell to you. No, no, no. He didn't tell them anything. He just said, yo, come out. I want to meet you. And they go out together. And what happened? Verse 5. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they called, he called Miriam and Aaron. They came forth and then? And he said, hear now, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make him known unto him I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. If you finish with verse 7. Verse 7. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all mine house? Now let's go back to verse six. Verse six. Mm -hmm. And he and he said, "Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream." Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to dwell on the verse six. 
The verse 6 was not just a retribution to them, but it was the established truth of God. Hallelujah. He is establishing that he does speak in vision and in dream. Hallelujah. Even though the context was that uh, he called them to reprove them, hallelujah, to chastise them, but the truth of it remains still true. Amen. So what I want to do, I want to lead you from that truth into what God wants to do. The truth is that it says he's going to speak to you in a vision and in a dream. Hallelujah. What it means is that Moses and Aaron and Miriam are being called by God. God has spoken and continually spoken with them. Would they be continually staying in the line that God has put to them? He will continually speak to them in dream and a vision. Hallelujah. And this will not reduce who they are or augment. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, and praise who they are. He will only continually put them in a position where he has called them to. Hallelujah. So that truth is that the Lord will speak to you in a dream. Amen. The reason why I, I'm breaking down is because I know some people, uh, they, they, might, they might say, well, uh, this, is, this is about what Moses and, and, and Miriam and, and Aaron did. And, and, but nevertheless, it is the truth of God that he does speak in truth, uh, sorry, in vision and dream. Hallelujah. So I want us to remain focused on that truth. Hallelujah. Now, breaking down from that truth, because he speaks in vision and in dream, you as a child of God, you might expect to be a prophet of God. Let me make it clear. You do not need to be in a prophetic office to be a prophet of God. Does it make sense? Because you see, there are things God wants to tell you, but your mind of doubt is greater than the word of God. So it has to cause you to sleep. In order to step, because you see, there are things God will tell you through a brother, a sister. When you hear it, you will say amen. But your amen will be different than when you sleep and then you hear God himself. Does it make, does it make sense? So the reason why now God wants to speak to you in a dream and in a vision is because he has purpose for the entire generation, for the entire group, for the entire people. Google, they started out in a dream. Definitely. The guy received a dream, and he dreamed about a search engine that was to be put together that people were searching in through. He woke up from that dream. He used that dream. Today, you and I, we all know what Google is. Hallelujah. If you look, most of the richest people in the world, they receive the idea through dreams. I want us to go back on where we at. The Lord will speak to you in a dream. Why? Because he wants to increase you and your people. They receive great insight of things that in the physical were not understood. They receive it in a dream. Now let me break it this. When God speaks to you in a dream, unless he says seal the matter, your duty is to release it. Does it make sense? Because when God gives you an instruction in a dream, the purpose of that instruction is to build or to tear down. So whatever the instruction is, unless God says, seal the matter, you are given in order to release. Uh, 
um, take for me, hallelujah, take for me Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Uh, uh, when? In the last days. When is, when is the last days? Hallelujah. Are, are we in the last days? We are in the last days, okay? Listen what the Lord says. He says then that it shall come to pass. Amen? That prophecy who prophesy it. Joe, hallelujah, Joel in French. And when he prophesied it, Peter took the certainty of that prophecy and reiterated it. And that same prophecy, that truth is being reiterated now. And the Lord says, At now, he is speaking to us and pouring out his spirit upon all flesh continue and what i will pour oh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy hallelujah Amen. and your sons and your daughter shall prophesy listen carefully when your children who are not even yet to the age of maturity start speaking things through their the the abu the, to the word the math if you pay attention, you will hear great direction, great lead, and great insight that the Lord wants to reveal. If you consider the word of the Lord, and then you agree with the word of the Lord, that in these days, your sons and your daughter shall prophesy. Then you have to pay attention to what comes out of the mouth of your children. Let me put it, let me put it this way. One time I was sitting and my son, Matthias, he came running to me and he said, Oh, daddy, I love your business, satellite power. You see, this is something that is like, a, like, like, like just a say. But in my hearing, it sounded like God was giving me a cachet, a, a stamp. You see what I'm saying? Because he has no idea what a business is. He's only five years old. Pay attention to what sounds comes from the mouth of your children. Many of the breakthrough for which you were looking for, God spoke it through your children. We're talking about dream today because God spoke through a child. Hallelujah. To even pray for our dream. So that in our dream we occupy. So that in our dream we rise. So that in our dream we increase. So that in our dream we receive. So that in our dream we overcome. Why? Because we understand that God speaks in our dreams. Now you've been praying for certain things. And as you've been praying, Lord, give me guidance. Give me clarity. Give me guidance. Give me clarity. But you see, sometimes you miss to say, Lord, I pray, speak to me in the dream today. So you may do sometimes. You may not do sometimes. As if your dream was the last resort. You know what I'm saying? But it says, I will speak to you. Because remember, if you pray, and for you prayer is the same way as you speak to the Lord because you expect from him, it says the same way you must pray for your dream also. Because he does speak to you in your dreams.
And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. Your young men shall see visions. visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. dreams. So this is what God is saying. In the family three, he's going to cause the mouth of your children to prophesy over the things he wants to do in your family. He's going to cause your young men to have the vision on how to get to that destination. And he's going to cause the old men to have dreams so that we listen continually what he has to say. Does it make sense? So your entire family is supposed to be functioning and then... Uh, Because if God speaks to the old, speaks to the youth, speaks to the child, my entire family becomes now a mouthpiece of God. So I can consult with my young. I follow what I'm saying. I can literally go to my child and say, what did the Lord say today? I don't know, I don't know. Because until you consider the word of God, you will not consider what the word of God says. Until you value that word, you will not step into that blessing. Because it might sound contrary for you to go ask for uh, counseling from your child. <laughs> but you see, you as a parent or a hold, an adult, if you go to your child, you say, okay, um, I want to do this one. Tell me, what do you think? The child in his mind is not trying to give you direction. The child in his mind is as if he's like uh, just, huh? he's just like a following through. You see what I'm saying? But you in your mind and your understanding you know you are receiving clarity from the Lord if you pay attention. Give me the book. Hallelujah. Give me the book of Daniel. Verse 1. Uh, uh, sorry. Chapter 1, verse 17. Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning, learning and, and wisdom. Wisdom, continue. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whose four children? Who were they? And then? Hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. They were, when they were captive into Babylon, they were still little. Hallelujah. Now, the word of God says, for this far, he gave them something very important. He gave them knowledge and skill in all learning. It means whatever that we learn, that we get it and that we be better. Say, whatever I learn. Whatever I learn. I get it and I am excellent. Whatever I learn. I get it and I excel in it. Because... The Bible says, ask for, start with verse, verse 13, please. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he, con so he consented to them in this matter. And prove them ten days. Hallelujah. Amen. They were eating from the, from the, how do I call it? Uh, the vegetables. Hallelujah. And the other children were eating from the king's meat. All it means 
is that you were eating from the word of your father while everybody else was eating from the world, from the word of the world. Let me not read again. He says, let us eat from the vegetables. For in our culture, in our religion, in our line as children of God, we cannot eat the meat of an unbeliever. Are you know what I'm saying? Give me, give, give me back verse 9. No, verse 8, verse 8. Start with verse 8. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. So the purpose for which he did not want to eat, he was not to be proud. He was to remain in the will of God so that he would not defile himself. Hallelujah. So it was to please God, it was not to displease the king. Amen? It was not trying to be disobedient or rebellious. It was attempting to remain faithful to the principle of God. So, continue. Nor with the wine which he drank, therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Mm -hmm. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said, said, said to, unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who had appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, like, liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make me endanger my head up to the king. Hallelujah. Amen. It, let me pray it this way. The prince of the Enoch says, there are certain teachings I must pass down to you. There are certain type of uh, knowledge I must pass down to you. Why? Because you're going to serve with the king. But if I do not, uh, I understood that, brain. Hallelujah. Train you according to the way the king sees. You might not speak like the king speak. You might not be like the king be. You, you might not say like the king say. You know, nowadays they talk about being politically correct. Hallelujah. So even though it is meat food, remember that the word of God has always a what? A? The word of God has always a second intent in every word. Hallelujah. So even though he's talking about physical, actual food, like for instance, the Lord Jesus says, my food is to do what? The will of my father. So he compared doing the will as being food. A amen? So anyway, continue verse 11. Verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzah, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servant, I beseech you, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pearls to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, mm -hmm. and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. Mm. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. Mm. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Now understand from this one. What Daniel and his brothers were eating was literally the will of God. You see what I'm saying? They were eating from the will of God. They were not doing some kind of quote-unquote just diet. Because remember, the reason why they wanted to do it, it was to obey God. So they were just doing the word of God. And by doing the word of God, they became more efficient than all the other combined together with the big meat, meaning the big knowledge of the world. The Lord says, he's going to speak to you in a dream. 
And that knowledge is going to give you, we give you skill in learning. So you sleep, you get up, and suddenly you are deposited with knowledge that you should have normally gone for school for at least uh, 10 years. D does it make sense now? Because remember, the Bible said that Daniel had a different spirit. Remember that? That he had a spirit of excellence. Amen? So while everybody was stalling to do everything they were doing in 20 years, he was doing it in two days. Why? Because the Bible says that he had a different spirit. And other spirit came in by speaking to him in dream. If you grab right what God is saying concerning your dreams, you will understand why some people are rich because of dream. You might think that this knowledge that you must acquire, tell me, how did uh, Solomon learn? Two dreams. The first time he learned, he said, I'm going to give you a uh, 1,000 offering. And then I'm going to please you, build your people. And he prayed. He said, Lord, give me just a heart of understanding and wisdom to do what? Your will. And that's what the Bible says. That the same night, the Lord came in a dream. And did what? In that dream, he blessed him. When he woke up, he was rich. <laughs> am, am, am I right? The Bible says, God came in that dream, and actually, that part of the Bible always touched me. It says that God was well pleased with the prayer of Solomon. And that same night, he came, he says, not only am I not going to give you, I'm going to give you what you have asked, meaning to do my will. But I'm going to give you more than just my will. I'm going to give you what you want and what you even don't want. Not need. Because uh, Samuel, uh, come on, Solomon, he didn't need food. He, his daddy already gave him food. Uh, am I right? He had enough food to eat for all his life. But yet, God gave him favor, favor to have more than enough, beyond measure. All this in dream, because he made a prayer. Even the child is a prophesying that the Lord is speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 16, please. Verse 16. Thus, Melza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pearls. As for no, go, go ahead. Uh, 16. 16. Mm -hmm. Give me the Amplify, please. Uh -huh. Daniel chapter 1, verse 16, Amplified. Mm -hmm. So the overseer continued to withhold their fine food and the wine they were to drink mm -hmm. and kept giving them vegetables. You know what it means? They wanted to remain in the will of God by eating how God tell them to eat, so to do the will of God, right? But you see, when you are willing to do the will of God, even in the midst of a corrupt generation, listen very carefully, God who is the one who is the God of all knowledge, we pick from the knowledge of that corrupt generation what is good. The Bible says, keep what is good and what? Reject what is evil. So if we pick from the knowledge of that wicked generation and give you only the filter knowledge that you need to continually have the skill in the learning. Verse 17. Let's go, verse 17. Verse 17. As for these four young As men... As for these four young men... God gave them knowledge and skill in all kinds of literature and wisdom. 
Daniel also understood all kinds of visions and dreams. Oh, Jesus Christ. If your name has changed today, it has to be become Daniel. As for this young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all kinds of literature and wisdom. In another word, whatever they did not know to do in the world, they go to it. They don't learn it. They touch it. And learning is transferred literally. Or you don't believe God is able to do that. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you can be sending, you see a space. You don't take a meter to calculate the distance, the diameter, <laughs> and all those. But you just see the space. And you look at your stuff, and then you know this, 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 this. We fit like this, like this, like this. And when you finish, it like fitted. Have you ever been in a position like this? You haven't calculated before. Even in cooking. <laughs> you, you just open your eye, look. When you look, the, the thing is communicating information to you on its distances, on its size, on its deep and depth. And by the time you finish, it is neat. But you see, God says, what he's trying to do with you is that as you pray, you have to intentionally pray for your dreams. Not just go sleep and expect to have some dreams. No, intentionally pray, Lord, today there is something I need to break through. There is something I need to discover. There is something I need to speak in and step in. Lord, speak to me in my dreams. And you go to sleep. And you go to lay down. But you must keep also your booklet. Hallelujah. Because he will speak to you for he says, I, the Lord, shall speak to you. In a dream. Hallelujah. Give me a verse. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Still in Amplified Version. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Now remember this one. With that word, there was a man who was called Job and Joseph. Actually, two Joseph. Joseph of Jacob and Joseph of Mary, both of them. Joseph of Jacob, he has received a dream from the Lord. Hallelujah. That dream that he received from the Lord was his destiny, was the explanation on how God going to lift him up. We all know that because of that dream, his brother fell into jealousy, his brother fell into anger, and they decided to sell him. The Bible said that when he was coming, he said, oh, he's a dreamer. Just let's get him rid of him. Let's get rid of him. But Joseph, the son of Jacob, the dream that he received was to speak that indeed he shall be great. Now, he did not come great or become great just like this. Indeed, he went through trial, but he kept in his mind the dream that God gave him because it was the word of truth. What is the dream that God has spoken to you even as a child? That you are still remembering that you need to fulfill. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 19. Verse uh, sorry, 19. let's go back to verse 18. Verse 18. Uh -huh. 
Where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. In other words, the people perish. The word of God tells us here. He wants to give us a vision. But that vision happens in two ways. You are either awakened or asleep. So he wants to give you a, an explanation. He wants to give you an insight of things to come and things to be. But you must consider the dreams that he gives unto you. You must also pray for the dreams that he's going to give unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then let's finish with a number chapter. Give me numbers. Chapter 12, verse 6. I'm going to go now and back to it. Number chapter 12, 12 verse 6. six. Uh -huh. And he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to, he, to him in a vision. And I, and I will speak to him in a dream. Hear now my words, saith the Lord. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. And I will speak to him in a dream. I said earlier, the Lord is calling you to be his prophet. To speak. To speak from the spirit of God. The Lord is calling you not necessarily in the prophetic office. But he's calling you to be his prophet. And then he says, if there be any person among you who is a child of God, born again, and spirit filled, I, the Lord, will speak to him in a dream. Hallelujah. Now the question you have now to answer for yourself is whether you are a child of Christ born again of spirit. Hallelujah. You got to answer that question for yourself. Are you a child of the Lord born again of spirit? If the question is, I'm uh, sorry, if the answer is yes, the Lord says, I will speak to you in a dream. So that among you, the people will have a vision so that they perish not. Hallelujah. I see everybody is laughing over here. I don't know who's laughing to that, but <laughs> Amen. Amen. I will speak to you in a dream. Now, why is the Lord wants to speak to you in a dream? Yes? Yeah, thank you. Uh huh. The Lord wants to speak to us, to us in a dream because God is our creator and he wants to give us prophecy and revelation and mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord wants to speak to us because he is our creator. He wants to give unto us prophecy, revelation, and mysteries. Have you ever been in a situation where you have been like, hmm. he's like, I already lived this one. They call it déjà vu. No, déjà vu, déjà vu. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you, sometimes you can be in a situation and then you are able to tell what's going to go after because you have that sense and that feeling that you have already lived this one and you can even speak of what will come after and it happened this way because you had it in the dream. If you agree with the word of God, like Daniel agreed with the word of God, I'm going to eat as God said I must eat. Are you know what I'm saying? 
So I'm going to receive a dream because God says he's going to speak to me in a dream. So when I lay down my head, I don't deal with the devil. I, hallelujah. Let me put it this way. When I stick myself to God and I go sleep and I see wizard and witches, I'm not saying I have attack. I say I'm getting what? Modern revelation, we call it intelligence. You know, when they say uh, the CIA, they gather intelligence. Let, let me break it down again. When you are a child of God, give me like John. John gets up, he sees in the kingdom, he sees beast. And this beast has four head. And four head and then wings. And in the wings, there are eyes inside. If it were you, you will bind it. You will bind it. You will bind it. You, you will call all the blood of Jesus on it. And then we finish. You feel what I'm saying? No, am I right? But here's a problem. If your channel is connected to the station of God, then you cannot hear the devil. Let me read again. When you have your channel, your radio, that you have tuned to the station, uh, station, to the station you want to listen. Unless it is hijacked, you will only listen that station. So when you are with God, this one, that's a revelation for you. When you are with God, he said he will speak to you in dream. So when you see the witch and the wizard rise, he's just showing you the movie of what they are conspiring. Because now, you have now every plane of the enemy. The Bible says that the prophet, uh, was that uh, Elijah, Elisha? The Bible said that he was able to know what the king was doing in his chamber. How did he know it? Suddenly, either by vision or by dream. Because what the king was preparing was not to bless him. He was preparing to kill him. But by the time the king is cooking, the killing, God opens his eyes. He can see it. That's what I'm saying. So he is not being all freaked out. Ah, I am under attack. Ah, I am under attack. No, you're going to be under attack. <laughs> you're being prepared to be under attack. So God is giving you the ahead of time. What do I say is God? Because if you assume that uh, you are connected to God, born again, amen, and you literally want to hear from God, he will speak to you. But when God speaks to you, he speaks to you of the whole thing. The Bible says that uh, the Lord Jesus says, I saw Satan falling. In another word, he did not see only the holy angel. He saw also the demonic. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, he said he's going to speak to you in a dream. But your dream, you must consider it as being the literal voice of God for your direction. And you must intentionally want to step just because you dream it. I was telling my wife, I said, one time I was dreaming and I, I had a possession in my hand. And I grabbed it, but not strong enough. And I wake up, I didn't see it. I was like, ah. And I said literally to myself, I said next time, when I see in a dream another possession, like that time, I will hold it. Now, I dreamed. And in my dream, there was gold. And I remember the word that I have said when I was awakened. Literally. And I said, ah, I remember I said, I was, this time I will 
grab it strong. So I grab it and I wake up. It was not there again. I say, ah. <laughs> I say, but okay, next time I will bind it. I will stick it. <laughs> I will glue it. <laughs> So I went to dream. But this time, I have $1 million. Hey. I put my leg like this. God, then I said, <laughs> I banned it. Strong. With the knowledge of what I said when I was awakened. And I get up. I don't see it. I say, no, this night. Mm -mm. I said, devil, whatever you, you, whatever you brought that one, bring it back. A month after, God gave me the business. You know what I'm saying? So, I know with certainty that he speaks to you. And the intent is to give vision so the people perish not. And when he speaks to you, you know, there are some people, <laughs> there is a lady, <laughs> she dream, even when she take a nap, she dreams, even when she lay out the head just to rest, she dreams at all time. All she has to do is to close the eyes. When the eyes is closed, automatically, Dream comes. Now, that sister, she always wanted to understand a dream. One dream comes in. Hello, prophet. Hey, I had a dream. I say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, dream of the morning, dream of the afternoon, dream of the uh, 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 evening, dream of the night. My phone was ringing. <laughs> My wife was well, same thing. At 2 a.m. in the morning, I hear slap pop. I say, what is this? <laughs> she said, I got a dream. I say, you did? She said, she said, okay, 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 tell me what it means. I said, okay, I listen. <laughs> 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 so she will tell me the dream and then my spirit catch the revelation <laughs> and when I come back on earth I tell her the, 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 the meaning but now she will do it every night so I'm saying every night and one day finally she was talking and then I said to myself I said if I tell her the revelation and draw that dream again she will do it the next night I'm going to tell her I don't know. <laughs> so, she said, what it means? I said, huh? <laughs> she said, the dream, the dream, what it means? Uh, uh, hmm, this one, I will pray about it. <laughs> From that day, she... She no longer tell me a dream again. I say, I, I did wrong. <laughs> I did wrong. Because it was where God was speaking and he was speaking big time. But you see, I only perceive as me being the translator when God was being using her to be the communicator. You see what I'm saying? So I have to amend to say, okay, what did the Lord tell you? And then she's like, now, now with the knowledge that uh, I do not want to do no more translation of dream. So now with that knowledge in her mind, she's like, okay, I won't talk about this one. I won't talk about this one. I, I won't talk about this one. I say, you always say, you yourself, you talk to yourself. Tell me about the dream you had. And then she said, um, okay, it will, it will be too long. Ah, that's too much detail. But every time she finished, 
She cut a dream. She cut, 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 cut. <laughs> I say, you see? You see? But now I understood that the, the dreams are given because he says he will speak to your hold in dreams, to your youth in vision, and to your children in prophecy. So your entire house is supposed to be functioning by any means. From that day, I pay attention. Because now I know and I understand that it was not for the sake of me to just translate it. He was God speaking for direction. Hallelujah. For he says, I will speak to you in a dream. How much are you ready to receive from God in a dream? How much are you willing to step further with the dream? Joseph, the husband of Mary, the Bible says the angel came in a dream and told him, quickly, get up, go, for there is a death coming to you. And the Bible says, being warned in a dream, he packed up and he went. You see, there are some things that you should not fall into it, but you got to have the wisdom of God. He saw the danger. He did not sit down to pray. I hear what I'm saying. You, once we get it right, we don't fall in the trap. God was not telling him that, hey, this is a matter of a prayer. No, that was a matter of intelligence for you to know how to function. That's why when you pay attention to your dream, you will know, you will know with certainty this one belongs to a warning. This one belongs to a doing. This one belongs to a goal. This one belongs to prayer. If not, you will pack all your dream in a prayer topic. You will miss it. Do I make sense? Because when he speaks to you, he says, in a dream, not in dreams. In a dream, why? Because each one we have a different manner of operating. So all your dreams will not be gathered together with one function or one functionality for you to apply the same thing over all of them. Mm -mm. Some of them, you must take it as a point of prayer. Some of them, it is a literal go. So you cannot pray about it. You can only get up and do. Some of them, is sealed the matter. You cannot talk about it. Some of them is released the matter. Until you speak about it, you will not be at peace. Now you find yourself in place and situations where you wake up in the morning, nobody has done you know nothing. But suddenly, you are angry to the world. Your mood is come in the mool. And bizarrement, uh, bizarrement, comment on dit là? Strangely, in a very strange way, you wake up in the morning and alone. Alone. Your visage like a, like, like, like a, I don't know. Like, like what we call it? Like you smell poop of uh, a skunk. No, yes, you wake up in alone. Nobody did it, no, nothing to you. So if your children comes, hello, mommy. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. That's because as you were sleeping, the enemy, who's always the enemy of our soul, fights your joy even in your dream you can dream about something and you get up you are you are you, you are mad 
uh, it's never happened to you. Hallelujah. He says, he's going to speak to us in a dream. There are dreams that are given so that you have direction. There are dreams that are given so that you have insight for your spiritual promotion, spiritual increase and development. Dreams that are given so that you be able to pass it on. But remember, dream that God gives you to dream, to pass on, that you don't pass, you will not be at peace. Because you think that is a dream, but God says, it is my word. Does it make sense? And Paul said, woe unto me if I don't what? Amen. For the gospel is not just a, a fashion way for me to speak about it. He said it is an imposition. Amen. Put on my back so that I must speak. So since dreams are no longer your imaginations, because people do say that. They say, no, you were thinking about this too much. That's why you were, you were dreaming. Well, let me tell you, the Bible actually said that's the way you have to do. Daniel went to the king, and Nebuchadnezzar told him, if you are able to have what I dreamed, and give me the significance of what I dreamed. Are you what I'm saying? Now, this is what Nebuchadnezzar is asking. He wants Daniel to go in the spirit, get the information, come back, and translate that in the world. But you see, Daniel was not afraid. He said, that's a little matter. What did he say? He said, this night I will go and inquire of my Lord. So he went and he purposely prayed about it. Purposely thought about the matter. And the Bible says he received it in the dream. And he came back, he told him what was it. I, I what I'm saying. So, don't eat the meat of the world by making you believe, oh, it's because you were thinking about it too much, that's why you dream. Foolishness. No, you must actually think about it. To create, because I told you earlier that I told to myself when I dream, I will do that. And when I was in the dream, I was thinking about what I said awakened. You don't eat from the meat of the world. You eat from the food of the Lord. And then you are expected to intentionally ask to the Lord today, tell me in the dream. If now, because you have thought about too much and you have dreamed it, then that's a good news. Amen? That's a good, because now you know how ah, to have answer. Because when you pray, don't you think about it? Hallelujah. So we bless the name of the Lord for having given us those little nuggets about dreams and why you should consider them. Daniel, dream. Joseph dreamed. Hallelujah. Peter, when he was having, he fasted. After he fasted, suddenly he had a kind of trance, which was a form of a vision. Hallelujah. So, if you want to have vision, fast. Amen. Because when you are hungry, your spirit will open. Literally. Let me give you an example. The first day you're fasting, if you do a six, ten days fast, the first that you're fasting, your mind is telling you you're going to die before, two, uh, <laughs> before 12. So your entire body is, is inquiring for food because your, your mind is knowledgeable that you're fasting for that period. But if you're not fasting, you can be without eating. It doesn't bother you. But the day... You enter into agreement of fasting. Even your toe is reminding you why you are to eat. 
Amala lying. And you start now fighting yourself over a covenant that you made. You said yesterday you will fast. By the time 12 noon arrive, your belly say, yo, what do we do? We hungry over here. Your heart say, after all, you can break it at any time. And then you can pray over it. And then you start fighting among yourself. And now by, by any means you pass somewhere, the, the, the neighbor suddenly is doing the, the ndole that you like. They're like, eh, actually the neighbor is a white guy. And then you, you're like, ah, is that coming about? That white guy is doing ndole. This is the devil. <laughs> so all circumstances are put together to try you. But all this, why? Because your dream is so strong. Your spirit is so strong in the Lord. Your promises are so true. Your covenant is so strong that the enemy is doing by any means to chop it. But when now you remain in your vow or you remain in your promise and you don't burn down, when you finish that fasting, you can sense in your spirit that you have crossed a wilderness. So, you have to intentionally pray for your dreams. Intentionally use your dreams as a catal uh, uh, catalyst. Hallelujah intentionally you're looking for a turnaround use them as a literal catalyst eh? a booster <laughs> yeah there you go first booster second booster third booster you must get your dream shot hallelujah get them because God says I will Speak to you in a dream. No longer let your dream go by like a waste. Because you would have wasted the word of God. You say, I will speak to you in a dream. And from the moment he does it, it's because he considers you to be his prophet. Father, I bless your name, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness, for your direction, for your spirit upon each one of us. I pray thee, Lord God, that every single of the dreams just as Daniel he had understanding in all visions and in all dreams. He magnified the very one that you are in every portion of dreams he had. And he had understood that you were the one speaking in order to know, to reveal, and to unveil. Whatever that is hidden, your spirit searches it and your spirit reveals to our spirit. So speak it unto us in a deep and deeper way. You have said that we will have dream. You will dream, dream. And your, our youth, we have vision. And our children, we prophesy. So that our families, our church, be able, Lord God, to continually do what pleases unto you. I pray that we will not discard our dreams. I pray we will not disregard our dreams, but we will use it as a tool that you have provided unto us, being the one and the altar of every word that comes into it. Lead us and cause us to understand. Lead us and cause us to see. Lead us and cause us to hear. I bless your name for each one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. Amen.